What's going on everybody? Christian from Treasure Town here and today I'm really excited. I have compiled a list of 10 dimes that have errors and are likely to be in your pocket change that you need to be on the lookout for. So one of the big things that I wanted to emphasize with this one is that all of these coins are actually conceivable to find and they're pretty valuable. And that's a big thing, obviously, why we're hunting in addition to the kind of novelty and coolness of picking out a coin worth a lot more than its face value. But what I did, I went back, chose the big 10 in terms of what I'd say are the ones. Now these are all gonna be clad, so there's no silver dimes, um, and they're, for that reason, more likely to be in your pocket change. And really these are the varieties that you should be remembering. And the way that this presentation is gonna work, we're going to go to PowerPoint, and I'll talk over that. We'll have pictures of the coins, and I'll also kind of detail some of the values, because uh, obviously that's important at different conditions as well. I'm probably starting around the AU uh, high XF range, and then ranging up to uncirculated coins. So let's get into it. I didn't order them by specific value. Instead, we're going to go from the oldest coin to the newest. And now for the first of our 10 rare and super valuable dimes to be looking for in terms of errors and varieties, we've got the 1967 double die obverse. So obviously we're gonna be on the front of the coin and this one is cool because it's pretty easy to tell if you have. You wanna be looking in the in God we trust, specifically in the God because there's gonna be some noticeably split and distinct uh, letters G O D, and then also in the engraver's initials, uh, which is to the left of the date under uh, Roosevelt's head, so you can see the split there in the J S, and then also a little bit in the date, kind of in the part of the nine right there. But it's a little tougher to you know diagnose it from looking at the numbers. And this one an A U fifty, which means that it could have been in circulation for a little while. A hundred dollars, mint state sixty three. $250 and mint state 65 which is like super new good looking straight off the presses $400 and that's actually doable you get good looking 67 dimes in your change from time to time probably more at the ms63 level though the next one one year later also a double die obverse and this one is a little less recognized but you can see it in the y in liberty in the eight and then also in the In God We Trust a little bit right there on the side of the E, but really in that Y and then in the date is where I'd look, the 8 and the 6 kind of in the circular parts of those numbers. This one is not quite as valuable, $30 for AU50, $65 for Mint State 63, 85 for Mint State 65, but certainly beats out a lot of other errors on other denominations. Right here we have a repunched mint mark that's actually pretty significant. It occurs when they they punch the mint marks differently from the rest of the coin. And when they do that, sometimes it doesn't quite stick. So what they need to do is punch it again. And we have the trace outline of a D to the northeast of the mint mark here. And it's pretty clear, but you want to be zooming in kind of right in that area. Uh, and if you do have it, It'll be a $30 coin for a low mint state range, 30 to $40. Mint state 65 is $75, but it's a pretty rare one. Not too many people have found it. Now, moving to the back of the coin on the 1970 dime, we've got a double die reverse, and we want to look in the states in the United States of America, specifically in the E and the S. That's where the clearest splits occur, though there is a little bit in the left side of the T there, but the E and the S is really where you want to look. And this one is $75 in about uncirculated 50, 225 in mint state 63, 300 in mint state 65. So this one gets a lot pricier as the condition goes up. That's generally the case with all of them, but this one is kind of on the more expensive side. Also going on during that year was the double die reverse from Denver. So you can tell if it's 1970 or 1970D based on the mint mark, which is going to be on the front of the coin. But if you have this one, you're going to be looking for 1970D. You're going to be looking on the reverse, especially in the America. You can see in the R, there's kind of separate serifs in the bottom of the A as well as in the C. And then also kind of in the top here of the E with the serifs. Um, and then again in that M, um, all, all over the word America, really, you can see that there's some slight 
doubling. Now this one isn't as pronounced and that kind of translates over to the value. AU50 is a $10 coin, mint state 63, $25, mint state 65, $50. So this is the least valuable coin that I have in the presentation when it's an error, but still a good one to look for. We then have a pretty pronounced repunched mint mark from 1971. So 1971D, this one is a north-south and you can really see it in the top of the mint mark that's kind of goes without saying but still good to orate it i guess and this one's also one where you can probably see it with the naked eye if you have this one in front of you the value isn't too crazy and that's probably because there's just not that much interest in repunched mint marks relative to the interest that there is in double dies and other significant errors, but this one's $15 in AU50, $25 in Mint State 63, and $50 in Mint State 65. So a slight uh, incremental increase over that 1970D DDR. Then we have two no P errors, and there's something important. So normally the no mint mark error, what that refers to is like a proof coin where it's made with a special surface. So it's not like the coins you see in your pocket change. And then they should have an S mint mark, but they don't. This case is they were supposed to have P and D mint marks for all of the circulating coins that were produced, but they left some of them off at the Philadelphia mint. So what these look like, there's two kind of different varieties and they just don't have a mint mark above the date. All 1982 dated dimes should have a mint mark. So if there's any 1982 dime that doesn't, you've got something good. Now the difference is one of them was a strong strike, one of them was a weak strike. So obviously you can see the weak strike, it's not that this is a really worn corn coin, excuse me, not corn. Um, it's that the strike just was not good. Whereas over here on the 1982 strong strike, Everything should be pretty pristine, good details. And as you could imagine, the values are going to be higher on the strong strike. $75 in AU50, $135 in Mint State 63, and $225 in Mint State 65. That compares to $25 in AU50, so about a third of the price. Same thing for Mint State 63, $45. And then on a close axis with Mint State 65, $80. So just a little bit more than 33% of the strong strike. As we move along, we have a less easy to see repunched mint mark. This one is a little tougher to find. It's on the 1983 coins and it's north south, but it's kind of a faint one. And you can just see the outline kind of peeking above the mint mark there. And this one's $15 in AU50, $25 to $50 for the mint state uncirculated examples and there's not too much to say similarly 1988d also has a repunch mint mark and there's kind of two varieties on these and they have very similar values to the previous one which i'll repeat in just a second but there's one where it's kind of a north south and you can see it on the south side just a little bit uh, peeking out there and then on this one it's kind of east west just a little bit of the left side of the d mint mark kind of peeking out there uh, and yeah, it's $15 for AU50, kind of in that range. Could go lower, could go higher. These aren't really set in stone values. Then mint state ranges from about 25 to 50, unless it's in really, really good condition where it can be a little bit more than that. And that brings us to our last one. It's kind of less of an error and probably more of some deliberate move on the part of like a mint employee, because there is also the 2004 D Wisconsin errors where there was like an extra leaf, low leaf, high leaf. And here uh, we just see kind of something similar, just something wrong with the die. It's like a small circular object is in Roosevelt's ear. And this one's a cool one because obviously it's found somewhat regularly and it's worth a fair amount of money, $100 in Mint State 63 and 150 in Mint State 65. So definitely one to keep an eye out for. And those values will probably hold even if it's more circulated than that. Um, people pay up for this coin. It's a really cool anomaly and there's no real estimate of how many are out there. So that brings us to the conclusion. You know, dimes are interesting because if you want to get silver in a box of coins, generally a box of dimes will have like one or two silver coins, but it's not as like interesting for making a video because there's not as quite as many finds as like pennies or nickels. So I don't generally do them too much on the channel, but there are people out there searching them. And the thing to do on those, probably in addition to the silver searching, is to check for these types of errors. So hope that you can go out there, do that, and find some.
please report back if you do. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more content, and get in touch with me or contact on treasuretownyt.com, my website, my Facebook, Treasure Town, my Twitter, at treasuretown underscore YT, or my Instagram, at treasuretownyt. Looking forward to seeing you on some of my other videos.